we have travelled to the cold English countryside to find a new game that will inspire us to keep finding joy in the hobby. And we found this. This foul, disgusting, depraved indie alternative game, PDF, that we downloaded, buried, and dug back up. What is Turn Up 28? Why should we play this historical game based on rude vegetables and convert a bunch of models and terrain in this video? Well, find out today on TTT. So here's the plan. I have a turnip and I'm gonna build a small piece of terrain out of it. I'm gonna build a nice little cottage for the lovely local farmers to live in. But while you watch me cut up a turnip and glue bits of wood to it, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what Turnip 28 is. So Turnip 28 is a 28 millimeter scale game centering around the conflicts of a bunch of degraded, filthy and disgusting soldiers in a post-apocalyptic world fighting over swollen, bloated and sometimes animated root vegetables. The nonsense world is full of fun brought to life by its creator, Max Fitzgerald. And while all of that is really fun on the surface and stylistic, for me it's really what Turnip 28 represents that I'm excited about. Being a bit of an outsider to this artistic indie culture, I brought the conversation up with Trent from Miscast. Uh, obviously go watch Miscast. He clarified very wisely that 28 now was less about the scale and more about an artistic movement or, or a set of ideas and ideals that go into people that paint and play these games. Breaking the mold, focusing on kid bashing, grungy art, and fun settings, these games have really started to pique my interest. But for me, it's a real process of breaking the mold. I've spent my whole life not really thinking of myself as much of an artist, and I've certainly been known to deride my own work by saying, I'm just doing a coloring book in 3D when I paint models. But developing on the channel and hearing other people's stories and being exposed to so many people has made me start to be kinder to the artist within me. So this silly little build representing a turnip and a house made of a material that's gone to rot genuinely is my way of stepping into this. It's a way of shaking off all of that obsession with uh, whether or not something is built right, whether it's painted right, whether it's going to last forever, whether or not I can use it in my army because I think these days that is becoming less and less certain. I predominantly play Warhammer and Games Workshop changes their rules so often that you can't rely on that anymore. So I'm making a piece of terrain out of a vegetable and that is probably going to be unsanitary did play on and I'm gonna have to throw it in the bin and that's important uh, to me I, I'm really glad I'm doing that because it's basically my way of saying like at the same time as my art matters god my art <laughs> don't think I've ever said that before the same time as what I'm doing matters to me it also doesn't have to last forever and it doesn't have to have a bunch of hang-ups about it it doesn't even have to be built to a crazy high quality it's it's a turnip house for god's sake so that's why I'm doing it and with the house coming together finishing up and putting some glazes of paint on it. I'm going to set up a time lapse and we're going to see if this thing decays. It is winter in Australia and it's a root vegetable, so I imagine it'll be pretty resilient. But we are going to come back to that and see what happens. But that's all built and honestly, it was a lot of fun. It was kind of fun to just slap stuff together and build something that visually represents turnip, feels turnipy, and gets me ready to do some conversions. Jen and I are going to be making some troops each as well as a leader for our warband. The game is usually built with anywhere between maybe about 15 to 35, 40 models. So we're just just gonna get cracking make a squad each as well as a commander and if we love it we can continue with it if we don't it was just fun it doesn't matter we don't have to add the unit to our 4,000 point army we just made something cool and uh, and that's the goal of today's video so I've waffled a bunch about my turnip house but it's time to see Jen make her bottles and I'm gonna move on and make my warband So, Turnip 28, uh, I know absolutely nothing about this game, but reading through this core rules book, uh, there's some really awesome stuff in here. There's some really cool cults that you can join if you like, uh, and they're all really themey, and there's some really awesome ones. The one in particular incorporates uh, these knights that are on snails, and they move really, really slowly, but for one turn, they can just book it down the battlefield. And while all of these ideas are really cool, I wanted to try and come up with something more original and more my aesthetic. So in the lore of Turnip 28, all of the soldiers and beings that inhabit the earth worship vegetables. Vegetables are the prized possession and so I sort of started playing with that concept a little bit more. And I thought about the dirt and I thought about caves. I decided I wanted to try and use crystals and incorporate that into my theming. The idea being that I wanted these crystals to be taking over the souls of these inhabitants, turning them eventually into 100% crystal. So that all being said and done, uh, I'm going to take these British guys and 
start uh, kit bashing them to make them look a little bit more like how I imagined them. So I got these kits from Warlord Games and I have never worked with these before but I'm excited to try something new. There's a couple here holding some wild animals so I thought if I did want to go down that path for that cult this could be a really good way to incorporate that. There's also a guy on a donkey in this particular box and I thought he would be perfect for my toff so I immediately set him aside and we're going to come back to him a little bit later. For my actual dudes I decided that I didn't really particularly like their heads. I thought if they were going to be immortalized in crystal I th they would probably hide their faces as much as they could. Probably being embarrassed of a giant crystal sticking out of your face or who knows what. So I decided to entirely replace their heads. We have this awesome Bretonia box from the Old World series and I really like the heads that are in here. They're a little bit large for these British soldiers but I thought that that kind of works really well in Turnip 28's favor. So I went ahead and clipped off all of the heads trying my best not to shatter the weapons that they have carrying on their sidearm. I then glued these all on and this would pretty much be the base for making my soldiers. To make the actual crystals on these guys was a little bit of a challenge. I had to try and find a material that I could carve out to make the crystals and in the end I had remembered that Dave gave me the handy tip of using sprue tags. Little bits of sprue being cut at various angles made the perfect crystal that I could stick on anywhere on these guys. I even decided to leave the heads off a few of them and just make their head entirely crystal in this weird like zombie sort of vibe. After that was all done I wanted a way to try and smooth out that transition between body and crystal and I found this white rock texture that we have at the studio and I thought this worked really well. Using some super glue and just dipping this into the areas so it looked like they blended in a bit better. And I'd seen in some of my research that people had added plants and some tufts to their guys and I thought this looked really good. So I decided to add on little pieces of moss to my guys. Of course we can't forget about our tuff for this army and then they were ready to paint. So that's my guys pretty much done and I'm pretty happy with how these have turned out. I'm not someone that kit bashes very often but I really enjoyed this process of just doing something completely crazy and fun. I think they're really cool and I'm excited to paint them up to see what they look like and play with a couple of colors. When it came to picking what unit I was going to paint for Turnip, my predisposition towards looking for the coolest things that would attract me started to flare up and I was looking at this crab monster in there. But every time I looked at these things, it felt like a lofty goal that I was striving for to make the thing that looked the coolest. But where my eye kept going was the page about the gardening society. There's a selection of custom factions that you can play with and one of them centers around changing the game. You turn terrain features into gardening plots with little NPCs that plant vegetables for you every turn and you spend the vegetables to get boosts. It's called the Red Ribbon Society and the whole thing is focused around like competition gardening, which is an extremely niche thing, pretty much only in UK regional towns. I'm sure it happens everywhere in the world, but like it's a pretty regional British thing. And uh, I think it's really funny that that's the one that like drew me in. I remember seeing pictures of like these English, old Northern English farmers and they've got a giant vegetable and they're so proud of it. And um, that's how we came to my taproot troubadours. My whole warband is going to be focused on carrots. I just had this idea and it was fun. And I thought these minis from Warlord Games have really tall hats. And I thought, well, how can I make them look turnipy? I've seen the cool art in here. I need to do a whole army and I want to do it quick. I want to do it in a way that it doesn't upset me. I'm not finicky. I'm not painstakingly converting stuff. I'm just having fun. So I thought, what if I chop the top off the hats, flap them open and they have carrots. They are gardening soldiers who plant plants in their hats. So their hats are full of soil and then strapped onto their head and they grow carrots in their hats. And it's sort of a big shame for them uh, to lose their carrot. Uh, and they're the ones who can grow the biggest carrots are the proudest. So that, that's the thought. Uh, and then I just slapped on some green stuff on their faces to make some sort of masks, helmets, because uh, most of Turnip's models don't have exposed skin. They have these very interesting taproot themed metal helmets. It reminds me of the goblins from the labyrinth uh, meets Grimdark 40K. So with that spirit, in mind, I quickly put these together and made these conversions and I'm super happy with them. Of note, I did want to point out, I accidentally knocked one of these guys' heads clean off. So I got a citadel skull, drilled a hole in the top of it and green stuffed a carrot. This guy is so blessed that he has a carrot growing into his brain and grow the little roots on the bottom of the carrot are coming out of his eyes. And now thanks to the carrot, he has 20-20 vision. I've also got a guy who's just strapped carrots to his face because he heard the rumor that carrots improve your eyesight. So uh, naturally replacing your eyes with carrots, is the only thing that is going to 
to work. And I gotta be honest, this has been awesome. I hope you like what I've created. But as Jen has made a toff, which is the leader of her warband, I wanna make a toff. And I wanna make a toff that looks really different. I can't find any of the pieces around the studio that I would wanna use, uh, but I think I know the answer. Ah. Uh. I've been trying to understand, get into the mindset of my soldiers. But with the kits we've got, I just can't see anything. Grant us eyes. Oh no, wait, that's cos, not turnips. And they're not turnips, they're Swedes. But I do have a solution. When I'm thinking about making, ugh, bad decisions, I put tape in my hair. But when I think about making really cool custom miniatures, I use Hero Forge. And today, they're our sponsor for the video and I couldn't think of anything better than to use Hero Forge to make the TOF for my turnip force. The massive amount of customization is what I want to talk to you about today. Hero Forge allows you to create digital characters that truly fit any of your whims and whimsies. There are thousands of components that you can add to your models in never before utilized ways. And the ability to scale and customize all elements as well as the custom pose of your models lets you get the exact thing you're after. Which has let me put a hat on this pig and a sausage on a stick in the pig's hat. I love how I've been able to create a Toph that's leaning back lazily on his pig mount. He's got his banner in his hand, his sword at his side, a brace of pistols, and of course, a portable garden plot up back. Now full disclosure, some of the amazing customization I've been able to do on my TOF is thanks to my early access to Hero Forge's kit bashing system, which will be coming out later this year. A game where kit bashing is at its heart, digital kit bashing is a genuine expression of that craft. And I love what I've been able to create for Turnip with Hero Forge. Hero Forge allows you to create models, not only for digital downloading as STLs, useful for 3D printing, for online VTTs like Tabletop Simulator, but also in printed plastic or premium materials such as metal, allowing for some amazing gaming pieces for your tables. And if you want five free download credits every month, as well as their monthly pack, check out their Pro Plus subscription. It's totally worth it. And something really cool is the credits roll over. So you don't have to worry about not using them. If you don't use them one month, you get them for the next month. So you'll be able to make so many amazing things. So thanks Hero Forge for sponsoring the video. Check out the links in the description and our code tabletop time to get 10% off your digital downloads. Hello there. I'm not supposed to be in this video, but Dave and Jen have been having a lot of fun and I really wanted to make something wacky. So I'm self-inserting now. I'm gonna make a little fish man. Is this gonna work? I don't know, but we're gonna find out. <laughs> so I'm gonna make a thing. Yay! I don't really have a good reason why I just decided to grab the Skaven model, but the artwork for Turnip 28 has this real sort of goofy elongated limbs sort of vibe, which I think like a sort of messed up Skaven could probably closely match the sort of like long noodly arms and things. The head's gonna be an issue, but they all have funny helmets and stuff. So I'm gonna make his head into like a fish hat. That's where I'm going. <laughs> Stick this abomination together. My next issue is that the Skaven, being a Skaven, is like really hunched over and like darting forwards. And I don't want that. I want some sort of weird, wacky, jolly person. Jolly in the circumstances, or maybe due to the uh, various mycelium in his brain. But uh, I want him hopping up and down. So I'm just gonna wrench his leg. That's what I'm doing. Invasive surgery from the outside. I'm just gonna bloody change. Oh my goodness, that doesn't look healthy. But there, he's now hopping up and down. Bouncy, 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 bouncy. Oh, isn't that wonderful? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so cursed. I love it. <laughs> now to hide his Warhammer rattiness and to also add character, I'm going to give him booties. I'm going to give him sleeves. I sound like some rank hair. Could be really gross. And of course, I got to do the big goldfish mouth on the helmet. The little bubonic rats on his shoulder are perfect. They're going to stay. <laughs> He's so silly. <laughs> I enjoy this far too much. Uh, I need to go and actually do something now. <laughs> Time to finally start painting my guys up. I don't want to spend too much time here. There's a lot of guys to paint in a short amount of time. So I want to try and make this as efficient as possible. And really for me, that is using contrast paints to just try and get some color in there and to make them look complete. For some reason, whenever I think about crystals, the color that comes to mind for me is purple. So that's the color I'm going to be using today. And overall, when it comes to my followers, I really want them to be in a muted color palette. And everything else is kind of this drab gray. It's like this sort of 
decaying or dying from the outside and the crystals or what are taking that life force and then eventually they'll become that crystal. So using contrast paints, I gave everyone just a wash of gray to just blend everything back in and then used a purple contrast for all of the crystals on their bodies. Added in these blue sashes, which I sort of associated to an army color. I also went ahead and edge highlight all of their helmets just to give their faces a tiny bit more pop and then contrast painted in a brown for their boots and the hilt of their guns and a green for all of the moss that's surrounding their bodies. I also decided to base them in mud because I thought that would make the most sense for turn up 28. Everything seems to be mud. So I put some texture paste on their bases with a little bit of water to try and make it more muddy and then left these to dry. So I can't forget about the other model that I painted up my Toth. And I'm gonna paint him up using the exact same colors that I had used for my other dudes. I am however going to change one thing. This guy has an umbrella, which I thought makes a really good mushroom. I'm gonna paint this in a bluey green color. And with that done, it's time to see how Dave is going painting his models. So it's time to spray these. I'm not really sure what I'm going for. I think they're gonna be orange. Think of red coats, but orange, cause carrots. But I also need a scheme that looks muddy and messy and fits with the aesthetic of turnip. I don't know, let's just feel it out. I just thought this was mildly interesting. Um, I haven't used this color cube thing that Jen did a review on. I only know that I want to use orange for their coats and I'm kind of stuck on what else to paint them. One trait, one thing I've noticed that is carrying through a lot is there's like a steel blue that works really well. So with the inspiration from the color cards, I could get to work making my grim, dark, but still a little bit colorful weird turnip soldiers. The Taproot Troubadours needed a nice orange jacket. This would match their carrot obsession perfectly well, but instead of khaki pants, I actually opted to use the dark blue grays that were often coming up on these color cards. And I was going to use this on the hats and the pants. This allows the orange jacket to be a really nice focal point and keeps the models feeling moody and dark. They have a lot of straps all over them and for these I used a mid-brown, opting for a lighter brown with a scratchy highlight for all of the wood. I really didn't want to use metallics on this model as I wanted everything to be really dull so I decided instead to opt for a scratchy and simple non-metallic metal effect. Using blue toned greys, highlighted up to quite bright greys, you can create a really nice effect of shiny metal. I did this on all the metallic areas, axe hilts, pickaxes, tools, their helmet masks that I sculpted as well as their bayonets and guns. Another colour that pairs really well well and came up on these color cards was a light khaki or yellow and to get this color in I painted all their sashes and bedrolls cream. I kept it a little bit dirty as if these turnip soldiers on the road don't really clean their gear very much which works well. For some decorations on their hat I added a pale yellow as a splash color that pairs nicely with the orange and with these steps done most of the colors were complete. The inside of their top hats was painted brown and then I painted the various carrots on all of these models a really bright healthy orange. The stems of the vegetables were dry brushed green and I think this effect of dry brushing these tufts worked quite well. The black and red undertones that were sprayed on mixed with the green gave a really nice gradient of a plant that made it look like some of the parts were dried out and some weren't. Now these models are festooned in detail so I went around and picked all of those out. Some models having squirrels hanging for their back, others carrots tied to their eyes, others still pumpkins in their hat and of course there was one with a pig on their back. Picking out all these details, breaking up the large bulky areas of the model really made each of these models feel super characterful. To finish them up I dry brush brown on the bases and then used an even grosser green on the tufts on the bases as well. This would differentiate it a bit from the bright green of the carrots and help the model stand out. With all of these done, I'm super happy with them and all that's left is to trim their bases in a slightly disgusting greeny brown black and then do some reveals. March unto your fertile plot Carry the rod Carrot, 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 carry the rod. We're 
We'd like to give a massive thank you to all of our lovely patrons. We've been sharing some updates of our turnipy progress over there on Patreon. We also do a monthly mini review where viewers can send in their minis and we check them out and give you some tips, advice, or just some encouragement. It is the number one best way to support the channel and keep us making content. So if you're interested in joining up, links are in the description. Thanks patrons. March unto your fertile plot, carry the rod. Carrot, 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 carrot. Da, 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 da. This has been a journey, a weird journey, but a fun journey. This is the first ranked regiment of troops I've ever made in my life. Me too. Yeah. yeah. So it's the first time I've held a movement tray that I've painted the contents of. It's been a really weird journey exploring Turnip. It seems like a really cool game. I'd love to play it, but to do that, I need to paint like 20 more models, 30 more models. Only 20 more models. I am not a fan of batch painting. Uh, and I don't, have I got good ideas left? I don't know. Uh, if this video does well and you would all like to see more, it would be really fun to make some of the more like wild things in Turner. Uh, what would you make? The snail knight. I've already said it like four times. I'll say it again. The snail knights are 100% the thing I want to make. I've been thinking about making uh, a couple of like heavy cavalry that fit this theme or maybe the villages and little farm tokens. Mm. So uh, going for the farmer element or do I make the aunties in the flying balloon oh, and yes. just go full aunts ascendant? <laughs> I don't know. There's so much fun to be had with Turner. It's been great fun exploring it and exploring a completely different miniatures game other than Warhammer. Mm. So yeah, if you like this kind of content and want to see more of it, let us know. Uh, thank you, of course, to HeroForge for sponsoring the video. And I'm sorry I didn't paint my toff. I had a tough time. And thank you to Waller Games as well for sending us the kits that we used to make these guys up. It was very nice of you and we appreciate it. And if you would like to see us at the supermarket purchasing our turnips, you should join our Patreon. And no! Break my model. No! No! Thanks. No, he's just feet. <laughs> he got really crystallized into feet.